What's up guys, John here, and today I got a game in, a game I've been waiting on for weeks now, and I'm really excited because it's an M2 port of an awesome cave game, and that game is Katsui Detany, I, I guess that's how you pronounce that, on the PlayStation 4. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so I got this game in new, you know I'm gonna do an unboxing on it. So I just wanna say first off, I am so excited that I got this art book in. I've seen pictures on Twitter, Instagram, online of people having the art book. I didn't know if you had to pre-order the game to get the art book, but I got it and this is how I got it from PlayAsia. So I'm really excited about that. Anyway, as far as the game's concerned, it does feel kind of light. Now that sticker on the front of the case there, I'm gonna attempt to peel that sticker off and stick it on the front of the game. Now, this is something I do whenever there's stickers from the factory on the front of the case on the plastic cellophane. I always try to peel it off very, very carefully and stick it on the front of the case. That's just a funny quirk of mine. And it's something I've got a little bit of flack about in the comment section on some of my videos. So let's just try to get this thing off of here, leaving that sticker intact. Look, if I've damaged that sticker, I ain't gonna lie, y'all, that would mess me up a little bit. Almost here. Almost. This one's not easy. All right, now this game feels kind of light. Is there a manual? No, there's not. No, there's not, but there is a reversible cover and that looks sort of like the Xbox 360 and PS3 release of Ketsu Detany. But anyways, guys, that's my copy of the game. The Ketsui games have seen ports across many different systems. The original Ketsui was made by Cave and released in Japanese arcades in 2003. There was a 2008 Nintendo DS release, yes, Nintendo DS in Japan only, that was kind of like a, um, it was kind of like Ikaruga, where it was like boss after boss after boss after boss. I have it downloaded on my GPDXD. Anyway, that game's very expensive, and it's kind of weird that it saw a DS release. It was also released on the Xbox 360, as well as the PS3, and I think that was right around 2009 or maybe 2010. And this year, in 2018, we see the release of Ketsui Detany on the PlayStation 4 with many, many, many different options that were lacking from a lot of the previous ports. So before I really get into the game, I want to talk about the company that made it and the company that ported it over. So I, I'm jumping on that, uh, what do you say, the hype train. The hype train. I'm on the, the cave hype train. Cave games are good. The aesthetic, the feel... I can see my hitbox against all the enemy bullets, the game mechanics, like my god. They make some killer shooters and just in my opinion from all the shooters that I've played for what it's worth, you know, they really hit their stride releasing all those games on the Xbox 360. Anyway, so Cave made the game and now we're getting ports of it on different systems. So this system on the PlayStation 4, the release that I have, was supported by a company called M2, and this is actually part of a series called the M2 Shot Trigger series that I'm very interested to see what other games M2 is bringing over. I've heard rumors of other shooters that are amazing and will blow your mind, but I'm not gonna mention them just yet because I have not been able to confirm whether those releases are legitimate or not. But just be aware that M2, they do have plans on releasing a series of games. I don't know if it's gonna be exclusive to PlayStation or the PlayStation 4, but it, it even says it right on the front cover, the M2 Shot Trigger series. Anyway, so the company that brought it over, M2. So M2 has ported many, many, many great arcade games and shooters over the years to different systems, okay? One of them that it's kind of funny that I'm talking about this, uh, the Wii. You know, people are making YouTube videos about WiiWare and the Wii going offline and not being able to download stuff. Really, guys, if you if you hack your Wii, you can download all those WiiWare games for free. You know, I, I, I watched a video on how to do it recently. It's actually pretty simple. Um, you know, if you want to know more about that, I'm, I'm happy to let you know. But anyway, this company, M2, WiiWare had some exclusive games that only came out on the Wii. And it was part of a series called the Rebirth series that M2 teamed up with Konami to make. And there was like a Gradius, there was a Contra Rebirth game, Gradius, and a Castlevania, uh, Castlevania the Adventure Rebirth that came out on the Wii as WiiWare exclusives. And, you know, like the Gradius game, it's like a mismatch of different Gradius levels, but there's mechanics in all of those games and certain levels on some of those games that were exclusive to the Wii. 
So just throwing it out there, if you haven't played any of those amazing arcade games on the Wii, um, you know, they were ported over by Konami and M2, and M2 just makes some of the best arcade conversions and ports for any console. So definitely check those out. And one more quick little note, this company M2, my God, these guys are doing arcade perfect ports. They're adding in options for scan lines. I mean, pretty much you can make these games arcade perfect, especially if you have an arcade stick. And they even add in the slowdown from the original board. Like, and it happens at the time when all the bullets are on the screen, you need to navigate them. I just want to say I really appreciate what M2 is doing here. You're definitely not going unnoticed, especially for me. And I cannot wait to see what you guys do with this Shot Trigger series. So once you get your disc out and you load it into your PS4 and you install the game, and you know, that's one thing I noticed. Smaller games like this, they get entirely installed onto the hard drive. At least I think they do. And I guess what happens, do you just use the disc as like a key to access that content that's on your hard drive? And if that's the case in the future, if they could figure out a way to disable that, that way when I remote in with my Vita, if I could access everything that's on my hard drive, that would be great. But anyway, the menu system is pretty straightforward with options such as Arcade, Super Easy, and Destiny. And you guessed it, these options control the game's difficulty. Now there are other options such as Custom, IKD 2007 Special, and Arcade Challenge that allow you to tweak options like scoring, difficulty, which we just talked about, and where to start in the game to do specific levels and meet specific goals. And so if you look at all the things that M2 did for this game, it, coupled with all the extra options that you get that weren't in you know PS3 and Xbox 360 versions, there's a lot of replay value in this game, so they really went all out when they did this port, and they added a ton of options, comparatively speaking, to some of the previous releases. Now, one important thing to talk about in this game, any cave game for that matter, is the graphics and just the way, the wonderful way these games look. They, they totally nailed that mid-90s aesthetic. You know, games like Battle Garaga and Strikers 1945, like those games really hit home with me. And when Cave makes a game like this, they take like that formula of those previous games and they just expand upon it so, so much. And, you know, no wonder M2 brought Battle Garaga to the PlayStation 4 and no wonder that they brought this game to the PlayStation 4. So I'm just, you know, some of these levels, they do run together quite a bit. And there's not a ton of levels. There's only like four or five. But just the gameplay in this game, you know, the gameplay... You know, coupled with the graphics, it's so good. And the gameplay in this, you know, it's no different than any other cave game. You have your spread shot, you got your focus shot, and you got your bomb. If you've played any Don Pachi or Don Pachi game, pretty much the same battle system. I mean, look at uh, the NG Dev Team games. Look at uh, look at Ducks. Look at uh, look at Fast Strike. You got your regular shot, focus shot. You got your bomb. Look at Ryzen, even though I haven't played it yet. You know, or uh, Neo XYX, you know, they all those games have a very, very similar battle mechanic. And no wonder the NG dev team is making shooters like that because the battle mechanics that Cave put out there and their arcade shooters are just iconic and really set the standard for shooters of that generation. Now, one thing that I did notice that's different from other Cave games, especially ones for the Xbox 360, is that hitbox. Now, and I haven't played every Cave game or every Xbox 360 shooter, but I will say this, you know, the ones, at least the cave ones, have that hitbox in the middle of the ship that you can see that flashes, and you can really judge where your ship is in relation to the enemy bullets and fire around you. This game doesn't have that, but the style and shape of the ship is the same as it would be in like a Don Pachi game. So I really don't feel like I need that flashing light to navigate those bullets. And I mean, I, I was, my first playthrough, I only went through a couple of lives and got through the whole game on super easy. And super easy is not easy. It's really hard. But, you know, check out my live stream. You know, I glided through this game of my first playthrough, you know, pretty, pretty damn smoothly. And that's only because I'm now familiar with a lot of those cave shooters. So I'm not going to say this game is lacking in one particular area because it certainly isn't. But I will say this, the music in this game, although it's certainly not bad, it's nothing notable. It, you know, it's definitely nothing that I would bump in my car. But I will say it does have like the digitized voice when you get like the power ups and you hear like power up, you know, or you hear like not in this game, you hear stuff like laser, like bomb shot, power up, like like let's use a game like Blazing Star for an example. You get so many power ups in that game and it's just like 
Power up, power up, power up. I could never get tired of hearing that. If this game did the same thing and I heard power up more than I heard like my own bullet fire, I'd be totally cool with that. That does not bother me at all. I'm a huge fan of that cheesy 80s, 90s digitized voice. And this game has a dash of that, which to me gives it a little bit of charm. So overall, graphics good, music good, gameplay on point, on point. And I can't stress enough the level of detail that M2 added to this game when they ported it over. I give props to them. Like I said, they have this Shot Trigger series I've been reading about online, and it's printed on the front cover of the case. It says M2 Shot Trigger. So what I'm hearing online, guys, M2 is starting this Shot Trigger series, and I've been reading about other games they're supposed to port over to, I don't know if it's the PlayStation 4, to be honest with you. I don't know if it's going to be a Microsoft system. You know, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be a mobile game. You know, I don't know. It'd be awesome if it, they stuck with PlayStation because, you know, I'm not a huge Xbox One fan. You know, there's no games on that system for me, but, you know, I'm just a product of my age and my environment. But, you know, hopefully they do release more games on the PlayStation 4. I mean, they already released Battle Garega in this Ketsui game, so I'm really optimistic that they're going to bring over some of those crazy titles that were, you know, kind of hard to get on the Xbox 360 and more awesome Psycho Cave or just any kind of shooters or arcade style of games because I know when they bring those games over, they're going to be on point. So if you're a fan of the genre and you've played through all the U.S. release shoot 'em ups on the PlayStation 4 or whatever you could find at a GameStop, which <laughs> is probably not going to be very much, start importing some of these shooters. You know, give them a chance. You know, they're yeah, they're a little bit pricey, but you're playing for some replay value on games like this because these aren't RPGs you're going to play one time and put on a shelf. These are games that you're going to play over and over and over again. And those are the type of games that I like to have in my collection. I do not like shit that just sits on a shelf. Not for me. I'd rather sell that kind of stuff off to someone that's going to appreciate it a lot more. So to me, this Ketsui Death Tiny, or however you pronounce that, is an awesome game in my book. All right, so what do you guys think? I mean, I feel like this is a solid shooter. I mean, odds are if you're watching my videos, if you watch my channel, you know that I'm not going to show you some bullshit. So this is an awesome game. And order it from Play Asia. It's kind of pricey. It's like $62. But they give you an art book. This is a very special thing to, to get something like this from a company. At least to me, I really appreciate it. It shows you know time and effort and passion for a video game. So this is what you get from Play Asia. I will say this. I feel like this Ketsu game is going to be one of those games that when it sells out, if you haven't got it, it's going to be hard to get. You know, people that resell it, they're going to resell it for a lot. And people that have it, they're not going to want to sell their copies. So $62 right now. Get it while it's in stock because, you know, trust me, when this game sells out, you don't want to have to go to eBay and pay that 100 or whatever. Dollar. That sucks. I hate having to do that. And I don't do that. You know, I'll wait till I can find it cheaper. Not at all. So... Ketsu Death Tiny, it definitely gets a, an A-plus in my book. This is a great game. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Now, remember to like this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, peace out.